the Pope on film. Act three, buddy! Act three! Act three! Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on film podcast to humpty dance our way into the third and final act of the show, and it is said third act, wherein we finally, in eventually, get around to discussing our movie of the week. And this week we discuss something actually fun for once, the 2021 film that, uh, as opposed to the films we watched this summer, does not suck balls, the new movie, The Suicide Squad. And first yes. off, let me say that everyone was talking about how great John Cena was in this film. I looked all over the place. I didn't see him at all. <laughs> so, okay. I don't know where he was. Did he Did he play the rat? I don't know. I didn't see him. Yeah. So, uh, after the summer that we had... We spent this entire summer doing a deep dive into the IMDb bottom 100 list of the 100 worst movies of all time. And after that horrible, hideous, uh, <laughs> no good, very bad summer, uh, it's nice to, to, to watch a, a movie with, a, with a, a script that isn't horrible. Yeah. And with uh, people in it that can actually act. Yes. And uh, I, I, I'll keep saying it, you know, I, every time I see John Cena in a movie, I thank God that no one wanted to buy his rap out. Yes. So every time I see John Cena, I go, oh, thank God he was bad at rapping. I, I now, really haven't seen John Cena that I'm, I'm aware of. I think this is pretty much... I know he's been in things. He was in Bumblebee. Did you see Bumblebee? Yeah, I vaguely recall Bumblebee. It was a he fun was movie, one, though. That's all I remember. He was the one who finally said, hey, maybe we shouldn't trust these Decepticons. Uh, because I, they say they're good guys and they're here to help, but I think they're bad guys. And also, you know, it, it should be said... They're called the fucking Decepticon. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't trust the guys with deception in their freaking name. Are all of you idiots? So I, I, I appreciate that. So anyway, thank God that, that uh, John Cena can't rap, because now we get to see these movies. And I'm hoping that eventually, I know this is ridiculous, I know that this is stupid, but I hope that eventually someone makes some action movie that that stars John Cena and The Rock and Batista. I think John okay. Cena and The Rock were both in one of the Fast and Furious, but to have those three together in a movie, that I would see. Yeah. You know? Uh, Bunny, what are your initial thoughts? What do you like about this film? I... I have a big list. Of what do you like? It's what really... You like? I, I... Out of the comic book movies that I enjoy, I do not enjoy this as much as a Marvel movie. And I'm going to attribute a lot of that to just not knowing the characters very well, so a lot of the nuance just goes by me. Um, but, out of everything that DC offered, DC has offered, it is by far and away my favorite DC movie. Yeah, this, out of the... When it comes to movies I could watch over and over again, it's this and Shazam. Really this, this is a movie, like, I have, I have a hard... I hope that was a good enough description for it. I sort of, sort of feel like I need to bring it through a wormhole and twist it around a bit to actually get at what I 
what I think about this movie. Okay. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked it a whole fucking lot. Yeah. I don't like it as much as Guardians of the Galaxy, which would be its closest comparison. Yeah. You know. I, I, there's a lot that I like about this movie. I like the psycho swerve that happens, like, right before the credits. Yeah. You know, the, the whole idea of, oh, Vivian Leigh, the star of Psycho, and then she dies a half hour into the movie Psycho. So I feel that, like, here are the, here are the, the suicide squad, and then you realize, then they just all die. Yeah. Spoiler alert. And then you realize that they were just a diversion for another team. Like, I really like that. I like, I like the little snippets that you get of seeing other D-list villains in the prison in the beginning. Like, you yeah. see Calendar Man, played by Sean Gunn in the opening. Yeah. And uh, I like that. Is that uh, who he was? I just, I was just like, oh, there's Sean, Sean Gunn. Yeah, you can, you can see uh, January, February, March, April, May uh, tattooed around his uh, skull. Well, see, that's exactly what I mean, that that I am not familiar enough to... Like, this is what I'm definitely willing to give the movie, is that I am not familiar enough with the DC Universe to appreciate things exactly like that. Yeah, it, there's, know? A lot of, there's a lot of little things hiding like that. Like, uh... The, the guy who was next to Sean Gunn laughing was a character, an obscure, like, black villain, I think. And his name is Double Down. And these magical uh, playing cards will appear all over his body. And he carves them out of himself and throws them at good guys. Like a really weird body horror sort of thing. So Calendar Man is making a joke and right next to him is a guy with squares carved out of his face and that's double that. That sounds way time consuming in a fight. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. You know, first I have to generate a picture of a card on my face. Then I have to, I mean, I mean, even if it's pre- like pre perforated somehow during the tattooing process, I guess, yeah. so that you could just rip it without having to get a scalpel and shit like that. And then you have to energize that flap of skin with whatever power you have. Yeah, like it might be easier if you just. Um, is there any way that your magical power could be on, like, pre-processed cheese slices and then you can yes. just throw the cheese and just be like, yes I, I would like to see a gambit but he's really clumsy with cards <laughs> and so he's like oh yeah mon ami well is this your card oh shit I dropped him hold on hold on shit I'm like okay here is I... this your card Oh shit, that, that was the rule. I, I, I don't think I can throw those ones. Shit, let me find one. A joker? Will this work? I am, I am down with that. And, and that gambit has to be just, like, arrogant as fuck. Yeah. You know, like, like, you'll face the great and powerful gambit. Prepare to die. And like he doesn't know cards. And that's right? where the cards go everywhere. Yes. He doesn't know how to like shuffle. Yeah. And then he has a cousin, and he has the same power, but he only throws shoes. Yes. So it's like if he gets into a fight, there better be no more than two people he's fighting. Yes. Because he only has two shoes. Yes. Oh, oh no, there's bad guys. Oh wait, there's three of them. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. But Gambit but cousin Greg. Yeah. I I I loved Harley mm -hmm. Quinn's 
over-the-top New York accent. Like your classic fake New York accent. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I really appreciate that. Just, just... And, and... She had just some good bits. Yeah, she did. In this, with... with they're coming to break her out, but she's already been broken out, and she comes up behind them while they're trying to rescue her. That was that great. Was and who's Milton? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about Milton. That's, That's really good. good. Are, are, are we... We're always spoiling shit, aren't we? Yeah, there were a yeah. lot of really good, very entertaining parts of it. Yeah. I, I, I also... I, again, it's... I mean, it was a really good movie. Yeah, I liked it. It was a really good movie. When uh, all the cute-ass little sucker fish were yeah. popping up on the glass to the King Shark guy. Yeah. That was a fun little bit, and I, I kind of thought that that's where that was going to go. I like the fact that Rick Flagg, who was in the first Suicide Squad film, is in the second Suicide Squad film, but I like the fact that he looks like shit yeah. in the second Suicide Squad film, because in the first one, he's just all handsome and rugged and buff and willing to fight the bad guys no matter what it takes, but in the second film, he looks like he's seen some shit. Yeah. He doesn't look as buff, he doesn't look as handsome, there's more rings around his eyes, and it just shows that, like, time has passed between the last film and this film, and motherfucker's done some things and seen some shit, and I like that, you know? <laughs> he looks exhausted in this film, but that's good. I also yeah. like the swerve of the first person we meet is Michael Rooker, and his character is this bad guy. And then finally, when the shit hits the fan, he just runs away. Yeah. You know, I like that. And I love the opening credits, because they use the song People Who Died by the Jim Carroll Band. Is that Jim who does it? I love that yeah. fucking song. Yeah, Jim Carroll is an author and a poet and a musician. And when he was younger... He uh, got into drugs, and he worked for Andy Warhol, and he was one of many people who, Andy Warhol wouldn't write a script, Andy Warhol would hire people to write a script for yeah. Andy Warhol. And so Jim Carroll was one of the numerous people that would, like, do drugs with him and hang out with him and uh, write dialogue for his shitty movies. He got addicted to heroin at like a young fucking age, and when he tried to, to like, get off of heroin, he got into like art and poetry and music, and he wrote this song with his band that is literally just a young heroin addict talking about all of the other uh, like misfits and addicts he knew and how they died, and that's the entire song, yeah. and I fucking love it and it's perfect for the opening of the Suicide Squad, and it feels like, it feels it, the same way that it does hearing Miserloo in the opening credits of Pulp Fiction, that this song is so badass that it sets up a gauntlet that the rest of the film now has to live up to. Yeah. yeah. You know? This, this song, what this song always reminds me of, and, and I never knew who did it, I know it from, uh, the end of the Dawn and the Dead remake. Yeah, forgot about that. It's in the closing credits and the interspersed ending shots from the movie. Yeah. Through the song. So that's where I know it from, but it's very reminiscent of the ending passage of uh, Philip K. Dick's Scanner Darkly. Yeah. Um, Where he's listing all of his friends who have either died of overdose <clears throat> or have otherwise fucked themselves up by taking drugs while not passing judgment on any of them. Yeah. Yeah. 
Love that song so much. And I was so happy to like go into a James Gunn film and be like, this song I already have on my phone. Yeah. So, hooray. Like, I'll have to add Kansas' song Dirty Work, but I don't have to add Jim Carroll. He yeah. wrote a book about his childhood being a drug addict and all of that, and the book was called The Basketball Diaries. Uh, he released it, I think, in the 80s, and then in the 90s it was turned into a movie with a ridiculously young-looking Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Now, I have a, I, I have a question, a Suicide Squad question. Okay, what's your question? Should the... Let me give my answer first. My answer is no. Okay. Should the weasel be developed into a bigger character? Um, I'm going to say yes, and I will tell you exactly why. Yeah. James Gunn based the character of the weasel on Bill the fucking cat. Yeah. Oh... That totally makes sense. And I love that, and it makes so much sense for James Gunn that he would, like, go to Bloom County for reference <coughs> for a Suicide Squad film. And, like, when I first saw the movie, I didn't like the Weasel character, but I was really excited at the one scene at the end credits. But I wasn't a fan of the Weasel character, but then when I learned that about Bill the Cat, and I watched the movie again, ah, it's it's perfect. It's spot okay. on. It's just it's everything. Okay, now let me defend my no. Okay. okay. Think about how cool it would be is if the weasel that came to this franchise what that chipmunk or whatever the fuck he is came to the Ice Age movies. Scrat. His name is Scrat, good sir. The weasel would be in every Suicide Squad movie, yea, possibly every dear, every DC movie henceforth. Yeah. But he's always just doing his own shit. Like, the movie just cuts away for a couple of seconds. What's Weasel doing? It has nothing to do with the rest of the fucking movie. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. But you just get little right bits that. of of weasel story sprinkled throughout the DC universe. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. That would yeah. be awesome. That's a great idea. So uh, no, we wanted... wouldn't really be developing his character. Yeah. You know, he we would still be his... like a. We'd just see his random adventures. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know who voices King Shark? Uh, Nanawe, they call him. No. Sylvester fucking Stallone. Oh, is that what it was? Like, I, I, I've seen his name come up on the credits, and as soon as the movie starts, I forget that Sylvester Stallone is in it. Yeah, really, never caught it's on. Really, it's really surprising because Sylvester Stallone... He's the shark. ...voicing King Shark? That's... that's odd. I never expected Sylvester Stallone to voice someone who's stupid. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone is so articulate. Yes. Do you know how difficult it is to dumb down his already uh, brilliant-sounding voice? Yeah, I, I wasn't, like, see, now, now, this is me, again, not knowing enough about the DC Universe, but, like, to me, all he really kind of looked like was a, a Hulk ripoff. Yeah. You know? And all we really did is kind of change Hulk smash for Nom Nom. I, I mean, like... don't get me wrong, he was a fun character. He was very entertaining in the movie. You know. I I like King Shark better when he's voiced by Ron Puntis in the DC animated show Harley Quinn, which is fucking amazing. Yeah. 
The, an the sh Harley Quinn animated show is fucking amazing, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. It is so good. I can't wait for season three. Did you see Lloyd Kaufman in the bar? For like a fucking fraction of a second. Yes. Did you, did you see the other cameo in the bar? No, because I just stopped and stopped and rewound that one. Like, because yeah, he was there, gone. It was, it was like, is that fucking? Yeah. And, and he was gone. It, it was. I had to go back to confirm that yes, in fact, that was Lloyd Kaufman. Yep. It, uh, a lot. Of, but talk a about blinking, you'd miss him. Yeah, a lot of people miss the second one. There are dancers on stage at the bar. And the dancer in the front with the red hair, that's actress, I wrote it down. Palm Clementia, uh, she played Mantis. Oh, okay. In the Galaxy. So, that was cute. And I love the fact that the bad guy is Starro the Conqueror, who was the first villain that the Justice League ever formed to fight from the first issue of Justice, uh, of the Justice League of America. Yeah. Their first, uh, their first villain was Starro the Conqueror. And that's always one of those, like, big DC villains that no one would ever be crazy enough to do in a movie. And so... Then, and it was a uh, fun villain for this movie. Yeah. It, this it, was a superhero movie. Yeah. With twisted this, superheroes. Yeah, this movie, yeah, uh, it makes sense for James Gunn to pick. This is why, I mean, if you remember one of my biggest complaints on the first Suicide Squad movie was when, uh, I, I forget the name, Will Smith, Batman had his kid. Yeah. I'm sorry, a villain would have taken that shot. They would have yeah. shot through their child at the chance of taking Batman down. They're bad guys. So when we had the scene in the prison, I was like, I fucking absolutely loved it. When uh, Idris Elba's daughter came to visit because she had just stolen something. And they, they had, had a yelling, a, screaming a, fight. Yeah, I was like, I was ball. like, yes, it, this is exactly. He's the bad guy. Why are we expecting good parenting out of him? He's a shit fucking father. She's a shit fucking kid. And they're the next. She's just the next generation villain. I want to take this time to say that uh, the. Bloodsport's daughter in that scene was played by actress Storm Reed, who was one of the stars of the uh, uh, the forgotten 2019 African American sci-fi crime drama Don't Let Go. It was yeah. one of my movie picks of the week back when I was going to do movies, and it's like a time traveling science fiction cop drama with an with a black cast. And that alone yeah. is is like worth going to see it. But she's one of the stars in it. Her name is Storm Reed, and I I fell in love with that movie. Don't let go. Not a lot of people saw it when it came out, but uh, it's a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah. I I, 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 I just this earlier in the podcast, but I really relate to both the dot man's parental issues. Yes. Uh, now I had heard. I have not. Recon I have not memorized this actor's name yet, but he's he's getting to the level of seriousness that I am going to have to learn his name, find out his yeah. name and learn it. But I have heard that... I forget what it was, but he did something very nice for the actress who played his mother. Oh, that's nice. For having to be so like hateful toward her. Yeah. In the movie. That's cool. And I was like, well, goddamn, that's sweet. He w he's also in the MCU. He's the Russian one in Ant-Man. Yes. And, and he's from some third thing, too. Yeah. I love him because he says my favorite line in Ant-Man, which is, 
This is the work of gypsies. <laughs> and I say that a lot, like in a week. I yeah. end up saying that a number of times. Like, who drank all of this? I don't know, it definitely wasn't me. Are you sure? Yeah, it was the work of gypsies. <laughs> and I will a... say, the, the end scene with Harley in the eye freaked me the fuck out. Was what? The end scene with Harley and the giant eyeball successfully freaked me the fuck out. Yes. The first time that I saw it. It, 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 it freaked me out. Yeah. Freaked me the fuck out. Apparently, I have an eye thing, so, that, so thanks, James Gunn. Thanks, <coughs> uh, okay, well, so Fuccio Fulci got me over that years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've got the eye back. trauma king. Yeah, I've got a bunch of background as to how this movie got made. Okay. 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 So the first Suicide Squad film it's released in 2016. That film was written and directed by Hollywood Golden Boy David Ayer. He wrote the script for Training Day. King Kong ain't got shit on me. And he also wrote the first Fast and the Furious movie. Nice. So... I guess. Uh, I've never seen those movies. I actually can't say whether it's nice or not. Well, I don't know if the movie's any good either, but you wrote the first script in a massive ten-movie series. So... That gives you a lot of cred in Hollywood. <laughs> So he started directing movies in 2005, and they wanted. And when he when he got hired to direct Suicide Squad, his idea was like, oh, it's gonna be gritty. So they hired him. Like Warner Brothers is like, it's gonna be a gritty, dark film, gritty film. So they hired David Ayer, who wrote Training Day, Fast and Furious. And so it, what he created was a dark, moody, gritty film. And the first trailer for the movie shows that. There's no neon. There's no cute thing flying on the screen. And it's, a, it's that the very first trailer shows uh, David Ayers' dark vision. But apparently, I guess, his dark vision didn't pass well because by the time the second trailer comes out, that's when the film is now the bright, glittery, neon hot topic monstrosity that everyone hates to this day. For a while on Twitter, a release the air cut was trending. Yeah. They're like the DC fanboys were hoping to do it again to see David Ayer's like a dark, gritty take on the Suicide Squad. Apparently, he had like a half hour in the beginning of just backstory to all of the different Suicide Squad characters. And so when they cut his version of the movie, they cut all of that out and just used it as small sprinkles of flashbacks. Yeah. But originally, it was just a, 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 a long look at how all of the characters got there, and then the Suicide Squad happened. And there was none of this weirdo neon hot topic crap. So yeah. David Ayers makes Suicide Squad, and it made a lot of people money, despite the fact that most people hated it. Like it, it was commercially reviled, and it's like got a 25 percent on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that. But it made about 750 million goddamn dollars at the box office. So Warner yeah. Brothers is like, okay, we need to make a sequel. But we need to make it not the last movie. So that's a difficult uh, way to start out any film. But the original plan was Will Smith and David Ayers made Suicide Squad, and then they both left to go make a David Ayers' next film, Motherfucking Right, for yeah. Netflix. And I saw that movie three times for the goddamn podcast. I couldn't tell you anything that happened in that film. See, see, I am, I... Uh, here's something that, that I could kind of go for, though. Okay? Because mm -hmm. I find this very interesting that this movie is The Suicide Squad. It's not Suicide Squad 2. 
it's its own thing. And and well let's let's run with that. Okay, so James Gunn did this one. Let's let's see Oliver Stone's Suicide Squad. Let's see Tommy Wiseau's Suicide Squad. You know? Yeah. Quentin Tarantino, the Suicide Squad. Yeah. We'll, we'll oh, no, just... we've got to go back to Cordo Maltese, and I forgot my shoes at home. Like, here's the framework. Here's what the Suicide Squad is. Watch your take. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, 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 Jordan Fields of the Suicide Squad. Yes. I'd be down with that. Diablo Cody, whatever happened to her? <laughs> Diablo Cody, the Suicide Squad, yeah. Uh, the Suicide Squad, Gilmore Girls. Yes. Suddenly Harley Quinn is talking three times faster. Yes. Uh, so the plan was for Will Smith and David Ayers to do the Suicide Squad, and then they'd leave and do Bright, and then they would come back, and they would both return to do the sequel to Suicide Squad. But David Ayers left Suicide Squad 2, the plan Suicide Squad 2, to instead do a different film. He wanted to do another DC movie. This one would be called Gotham City Sirens. Remember that, Gotham City Sirens. Okay. And the film would star Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman all in one movie and that was like a David Ayers was like oh I can't wait to do Suicide Squad 2 what other movies are you guys working on oh Gotham City Sirens shit fuck Suicide Squad 2 I want to do Gotham City Sirens so he leaves to do Gotham City Sirens but then Gotham City Sirens gets put on the back burner because wait we can't make this Gotham City Sirens movie and Birds of Prey so, uh, fuck it. Okay, David Ayers, we're putting Gotham City Sirens on hold. We're doing Birds of Prey instead. So David Ayers is like, that's fine, I'll wait. I, but I'm definitely attached. I can't wait to make the Gotham City Sirens movie. So remember that. So, uh, uh, da 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 da. Birds of Prey. If you don't like Birds of Prey or Captain Marvel, I'm going to assume you're a scared of the, the giant. Um, so David Ayers is out as, as the director of Suicide Squad 2, and Warner Brothers is struggling to find directors. And at one point, they tried getting Mel Gibson to direct it, so I can only assume that the Warner Brothers executive office uh, doesn't have a single team. I think yes. that's a safe thing to assume about Warner Brothers uh, they don't hire Jews for the executive office. But what happened was, James Gunn has been a smash hit for the MCU. He yes. did Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, and that was a big hit. He, he was also, a, uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was two, a big hit. Two grows on you a bit more. Yeah, yeah. You I mean, know, I... I didn't, I didn't like, like it as much the first time, time I saw it, but now I see it now, and like, oh, I love hearing the, that fucking Fleetwood Mac song, and the beautiful scene where they're first looking at Ego the Living Planet, and George Harrison comes on, and it's like, oh, that, that's some beautiful shit. And, and I'm like, and I'm like, of course Peter Quill was conceived in the woods behind the Dairy Queen. Yeah. Yeah, of that, course. Yeah. You know, uh, I I mean, uh, there are a lot of really fun bits in that movie. Yeah. Uh, it just well, it just has to grow on you a little more than the first one, which was a, just like, bang, yeah, just not out of the far. box, amazing. Yeah. So, James Gunn was a a big hit for the MCU. He did Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Two, and he's making a bunch of money. For Marvel. He also wrote all of the Guardians of the Galaxy scenes in Infinity War. Anytime that Peter Quill or any of the other Guardians popped up in that film, 
he was writing it. So really? here's the scene. Here is, here is the Russo brothers, and they're writing the script, and oh shit, now the Guardians of the Galaxy come, and whatever, they pass the, the typewriter to James Gunn. So James yeah. Gunn wrote all of those scenes, and I like the fact that they did that. So uh, James Gunn is a huge hit for Marvel, but he's also a very vocal leftist who would spend a lot of time online attacking Donald Trump and the Trump administration and everyone in the far right. And so what they did is the right wingers dug up all of the dirty and offensive tweets James Gunn did back in his trauma days. Yeah. And he was making movies direct to VHS. Uh huh. Like lower than low budget movies. They dug up all. And his first, movies. his first movie, if you remember, that got any attention was uh, what was it? Was it Shiver? Shiver. Shiver. I, I I get conf- a little bit confused with the title of that and an older Cronenberg movie, but this was the one with Michael Rooker. Yeah. And a few yeah. other. B-level yeah. character actors, yeah. you know, but like a decent cast. Nathan Fillion was in it as well, yeah. and it was his first non-trauma movie, and it wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, there was one trauma movie I was obsessed with in high school, and it was a direct to VHS movie called Blade. Yeah, a lawnmower at a golf course that went crazy and started killing people, and it is so dumb, but I love it. I just love yeah. this dumb, low-budget, uh, evil lawnmower movie. Really? So the, so the right-wingers brought up all of James Gunn's uh, old tweets and demanded that Disney fire James Gunn, which they did, and then Warner Brothers just scooped him up, and it's just like, James Gunn, Oh, we've been waiting for you because our uh, the DCEU is just completely in the shit house, and so we need you. And yeah. We're so excited, and come with us. We're giving you the keys to the to the big boys. We want to sign you to make the next Superman movie. Yeah. And James Gunn uh, uh, wisely said. Um, fuck no. <coughs> Superman is lame. I'm not doing Superman. And also, I'm not sure if you're fully aware of my odor, but I kind of already did see a, do, make a Superman movie. I'm assuming you didn't see Brightburn. Yeah. But anywho, so, so WB said, well, fine, if you don't want to make the Superman movie, then you can... You can adapt any DC comic book you want. Anything you want. At all, period. And I'm a little bit upset that James Gunn didn't pick my favorite DC comic book, Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew. Yeah. Little bit upset, because uh, a James Gunn Captain Carrot movie is just right up my alley. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that in the first issue, in order to get people to buy Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew, there was an interdimensional war pole, and Starro the Conqueror, the bad guy from this movie, uh, tries to destroy the animal universe, and so... Superman shows up. The regular Superman teams up with Captain Parrot to defeat Starro. Yeah. A lot of kiddie comic books back in when I, in the 80s would be like, okay, here is the first issue of Heathcliff, the comic book. Better put Spider-Man in there. Yeah. So I'm assuming that this is the DC equivalent of that. But, uh... Uh... Yeah, so James Gunn uh, chose Suicide Squad... And they gave him 100% free reign, and I really appreciate that, because Marvel is very specific about what you can do with their characters, but DC was just like, uh, uh, hey, you do whatever you want. Be as gory and as filthy as you want. You want nudity? Go for it. Kill whoever you want to. You want to kill Harley Quinn? Fucking do it. Uh, right now, the DCEU is basically the Wild West, so just kill whoever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter. Cool. 
And so I was actually, so that worried me. And I went into this movie the first time I saw it going like, fucking Harley Quinn could die in this film. Yeah. There is a good possibility that they could die in this film. And uh, there was a character who died uh, near the end that I was surprised about. I was surprised at the fact that, oh, this motherfucker died. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... But then a number of stars back in the MCU, a number of the stars put their foot down and said, uh, I'm not doing a third Guardians of the Galaxy film without James Gunn. So Disney wanted James Gunn back, and Disney and Marvel and, the, and DC and Warner Brothers, they all reached an agreement that, like, fine, you can have James Gunn back uh, only after finishing the Suicide Squad. Now, James Gunn uh, has done the Suicide Squad, and now he's back to work with Disney on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He is also, once again, going to be a consultant slash screenwriter. But, but, but let's, let's stop a moment and, and, you know, a lot of those tweets and comments that he made Man, they were really on the rough side. And, like, I'm not opposed necessarily to make a pedophile joke, you know? But, like, man, I, I, I don't know. If you, if you throw somebody out of Hollywood for it, though, you know, I'm not sure. But also, I, I think one of the reasons why I'm so easy to forgive James Gunn for some of his horrible tweets is also, is also like, I understand you going that far in dark humor when you are thinking, oh my god, I'm a big time director. I'm directing a trauma movie. You yeah. Know, like, okay. You're a member of the trauma fan. Yeah, exactly. So I can fucking understand you being like a horrible motherfucker on Twitter. Yeah. If you are thinking at this moment, this trauma movies are the biggest thing I'm ever going to do, then yeah, you're going to be yeah. a fucking douchebag on Twitter. And, and like his, no? his whole gig is trying to get as far out there as you can. Yeah. You know? So, you know, like, I, I, that's why I say, like... Yeah. Everybody makes, occasionally makes a joke that bombs. You yeah. know? And I don't know how much you should hold him... Like, what are we saying? Are we saying he, he's a pedophile because he made some bad pedophile jokes? Yeah. You know? I mean... He missed his mark on some of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So is that worth throwing him out in the ether? Yeah. Anyway, the whole story is fucking convoluted, but if it wasn't for if it wasn't for those tweets resurfacing, we never would have gotten the suicide squad. So that's yeah. that's a weird way to look at it, you know? They're like, the reason why this movie exists is because right-wingers uh, went back and found offensive tweets from someone. That's weird. That is some weird-ass shit. Uh, okay, so I, have a, I, have a, I have a question, though. Because I've, I've watched it three times now, and I've enjoyed it each time. But something I keep missing... Did Melvin exist before Polka Dot Man mentioned, brought up Melvin? When Melvin... I'm sorry, Milton. Milton. What do you mean? Was he in the... Was he actually in the movie before that? Because I don't remember Milton. Yeah, Mil Milton was the, like, fat foreign guy who was their contact 
that got them into the city and was mainly driving them around. Okay. And so, like, so when they finally enter, like, Jodenheim, which is a really funny thing to have in this movie because Jodenheim yeah. is a place in Thor which Idris Elba was also in. Yes. So when they go into Jodenheim, I thought that that was odd because it's like, wait a second, why is your driver with you? Yeah. This seems a bit odd. This, uh, as the young people would say, this is a bit sus. Yeah. So when he finally died, I liked the I liked that whole scene. Milton. Who? Milton. I, I like I like all of that. Yeah. But yeah, that's who he was. So yeah. So he was throughout all of that. The entire end I like, really loved, especially when uh, Polka Dot Man. Yes. Oh, so good. So now. James Gunn is finally done with the Suicide Squad. He's back at Disney. He's back at Marvel. He's working on Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He will also once again be writing all of the Guardians of the Galaxy scenes in Taika Waititi's upcoming Thor sequel. Yes. Because that will be featuring uh, Jane Foster as Thor. And also Thor, who is now a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So they will have a part in it, however big or small, and Jane's going to be writing all of that. And also, and and we've seen it. You know, we've had we've had a look at that before, and it's a good pairing. Thor, for whatever reason, worked with Taika. Really works well with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah, I'm super excited for that. You know, oh, their their sensibilities work very well with each other. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see the new Thor movie and a, just another Taita Waititi superhero movie. Although I will say, I am deeply upset that apparently in the new Thor movie, Thor has started eating right and has lost weight. I am going to miss Fat Thor. I kind of enjoyed Fat Thor. I'm gonna miss the big Lebowski Thor. Yes. Uh, I, I'm really gonna miss that. So I uh, also, it should be noted, James Gunn is currently working on a Christmas special, and I'm so excited for this. It is entitled, it, it is scheduled to be released at the end of the next year, and it is a live action, hour long special that will be titled The Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. And I just know in my heart of hearts, all we know is the title, and that James Gunn will be writing it and directing it, and it will be live action. But in my heart of hearts, I just <coughs> hope and pray that this is James Gunn doing a Guardians of the Galaxy themed parody of the goddamn Star Wars holiday special. Yeah. That is a dream to me. <laughs> and the plan is, is that when James Gunn is then finished with the MCU, he will be returning to the DCEU, where he is now rumored to be writing and directing, wait for it, Gotham City Sirens! Okay. So, so they're just having James Gunn steal everything from David Ayer. So death to David Ayer, long live James Gunn. Very excited about that. Also, they just wrapped up the John Cena Peacemaker TV show. Yeah. Where are they going to be putting their TV shows? Uh, HBO Max, the same place that oh. uh, the Suicide Squad uh, screened when it came out. So yeah, uh, James oh. Gunn wrote and directed that too. It's coming out soon. It's coming out uh, January 2022, which isn't that far away. So we're, we're I, I wasn't close to a... I wasn't as big of a fan of John Cena in this movie in comparison to the other characters. 
John Cena and Idris Elba, they played well off of each other, being similar type characters, but their interactions tended to drag the movie down a bit, I think. The way that, the way that I saw John Cena's character was that uh, Captain America got the Punisher pregnant. Yes. And their baby was John Cena. Yes. And so that was my mindset going into the Suicide Squad, and that helped me just care about his character more. <laughs> that it's just the hardcore, almost blind patriotism of, like, 1940s and 50s Captain America, but with the, like, revenge, bloodthirst factor of... The yeah. 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 I just didn't. Feel, no. No. I totally got that. I just didn't feel that it. It was as entertaining as some of the other characters. Yeah, I get that. I get you know. That. And pretty much the same with Idris Elba as well. His his character was too serious. For the rest of the for yeah. the rest of the people on the team, you know. Yeah. I feel that, too. But I absolutely loved Harley. I loved Polka Dot Man. I liked King Shark. I was not in love with him because I saw a, a whole clone. Uh, and, but I loved Rat Girl as well. One of the things that I love about this movie is that they trick you. They tried to trick you. It, so many people did press for this movie and said, oh, yeah, I, I'm John Cena and uh, I am here with my, uh, with my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, supporting cast member, uh, uh, Flula Borg. We are both in the Suicide Squad. Like, Michael yeah. Rooker did press for the Suicide Squad, and uh, yeah. Pete Davidson did press for the Suicide Squad, and fucking, uh, 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 um, like, Nathan Fillion did press for the Suicide Squad, and that made you think, oh, well then, maybe Pete Davidson will die 30 minutes in, 45 minutes in. But people did press for this movie that died nine minutes into the fucking movie. Yeah. And that is really fucking like, wow, you really like went out of your way to try and trick people into thinking that like, here's this massive team of people that will be in the Suicide Squad. I'm like, no, a lot of the people who did the press for this died quickly. Yeah. It's like, that was a neat little trick you did there, uh, James Gunn. Fucking, that was awesome. So that's all very, I got. I liked it. Very fun movie. Yeah, it was fun. And that's what I'm going for. Because the summer shot, we watched, uh, we focused, we took deep dives into IMDb's list of the bottom 100 worst movies of all time. And it was horrible, and it sucked, and so... Between that summer and the time in uh, the end of September and all of October where you take over the podcast, yes. I just wanted to show some fun-ass shit. And so next week, I am so fucking excited to be doing one of my top three movies of the year. Okay. I absolutely love so much. Next week... We're doing the supernatural horror mystery whodunit comedy Werewolves Within. Werewolves Within. It has a great cast, including Guillermo from the TV show What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah. And. Uh, the host of Baby of the Year from the greatest television show of all time, I think you should leave with Tim Robbins, and the greatest show of all time, despite what Bunny might tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if Bunny should be a part of my dangerous night crew. 
anymore. <laughs> he, he did not like I Think You Should Leave. Uh, it's got a great cast, it's funny, and it's a, it's a werewolf movie, but it's also a clue type who done it, and it's funny, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a horror movie, but it's not too gory. It's just fun and funny, and I am in love with it, and it is so good, and I can't wait to do it for the podcast. Also, this is me not saying that you should go to the Pope on Films Facebook group where there definitely won't be a link to a fan-made version of the Suicide Squad soundtrack because they they released a soundtrack of music but of course it didn't have all of the music because they couldn't get the rights to Jim Carroll they couldn't get the rights the rights to uh, I don't know I got my set on you yeah and then they also did a score and and so there's a fan made Suicide Squad soundtrack that has all of the music that was used and a bit of the score and it's definitely not available for free for you to download right now by going to the Pope on Film Facebook group. So this is me emphatically saying don't yes. go there to look for a link to download the soundtrack for free right now because it's just not there. Yes. And if it is there, then I don't know, maybe we were hacked, but this is me emphatically saying that it's definitely not there. Yes. So next week werewolves within we will also be talking about the, the number two greatest baseball player of all time i have a new business venture that i'm really excited about and we might talk about, we might have wrestling news because just every day a million things are happening right now yes of which i really i'm kind of getting out of the loop now because some of these people i just don't know so I don't know why it's impressive that they showed up. Yeah, I get that. Um, but yeah, like, I, I have never know. once seen uh, what is it? SLC Punk, SCL Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. Yeah. Oh, never what? once saw this purple person re- wrestle. But at least I know. Okay, he was a very popular wrestle wrestler who left weirdly. And it's shown up here, so okay. I get that. Yeah. But, yeah, it's an insane time to be uh, to be keeping your eye on the world of professional wrestling. So we might do that next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh, the ups and the downs, uh, Andy Warhol and Emus and Shang-Chi, Willem Dafoe's penis, I gotta say, I think that this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. Take this care. has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I felt the same way, you know, I said, I think that this will be a damn good one, but I didn't want to say that because you're the one who makes that distinction, not me. I don't want to step on your word. But anyway, anywho, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Buddy Williams. And I am Reverend Stephen on behalf of Natasha, Maxwell, Eleanor, Mal, and everyone else in the house. I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Cookies with sprinkles. Oh, yeah. Do 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 do